Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Kirito Apoi here bringing you another Minecraft World War II aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the Mitsubishi A6M0. The A6M0 is a long-range carrier-based fighter aircraft formerly manufactured by the Mitsubishi Aircraft Company, a part of the Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and was operated by the Imperial Japanese Navy from 1940 to 1945. The A6M was designated as the Mitsubishi Navy Type 0 carrier fighter, uh, or the Mitsubishi A6M Race Sen. The A6M was usually referred to its pilots as the Raisin, or Zero Fighter, Zero being the last digit of the Imperial year 2600 or 1940, when it entered service with the Imperial Navy. The official Allied reporting name was the Zeke, although the name Zero uh, was used alongside that name as well. The Zero is considered to have been the most capable carrier-based fighter in, world, in the world when it was introduced early in World War II, combining excellent maneuverability and very long range. The Imperial Japanese Navy Air Service also frequently used it as a land-based fighter. In early combat operations, the Zero gained a reputation as a dogfighter, achieving an outstanding kill ratio of 12 to 1, but by the mid-1942, a combination of new tactics and the introduction of better equipment enabled Allied pilots to engage the Zero on generally equal terms. By 1943, the Zero was less effective against newer Allied fighters due to design limitations. It lacked hydraulic boosting for its ailerons and rudder, rendering it extremely difficult to maneuver at high speeds. By 1944, with Allied fighters approaching the A6M levels of maneuverability and consistently extending its firepower, armor, and speed, the A6M had largely become outdated as a fighter aircraft. However, as design delays and production difficulties hampered the introduction of newer Japanese aircraft models, the Zero continued to serve in frontline role until the end of the war in the Pacific. During the final phases, it was also adapted for use in kamikaze operations. Japan produced more Zeros than any other model of aircraft during the war. The A6M Zero here is probably, if not, the most iconic uh, aircraft um, for the Japanese. Uh, this was uh, obviously a very important fighters them as it was basically their main carrier based fighter and as I mentioned earlier had a very good success rate in its early years of service. However with later introductions like the F6F, the, the uh, Corsair and just newer more capable Allied fighters, the Zero really fell behind. Um, but it still is a really iconic aircraft and a really beautiful one <laughs> at that. I'm very happy to go ahead and do a redesign for it as it's been a long time since we've touched the Zero. And I feel like such an iconic aircraft definitely deserves a spot on the channel as a tutorial. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and dive into it. So the Zero here we have in front of us is done up in its iconic yellow, or yellow, uh, white uh, color scheme. Um, the previous one I did was green, but everybody was like, it needs to be white. So we're going to go ahead and do it white this time, um, which I do think it looks a lot better. And anyway, uh, definitely breaks it up from all the typical green aircraft we typically have. We have the black nose cowl, which again, very common for the Zero aircraft, the cockpit, the giant red logos on the side of the aircraft. This one also, I went ahead and included some, some markings on it. So we have some uh, basically a little red stripe here in the, the tail section, and then we have our vertical stabilizer here with some yellow markings as well. Now, this is not based off of um, anyone in particular, just kind of a combination of some pictures and stuff like that I found online and always nice to kind of add like the colors to the tail as uh, they would add those to kind of highlights quadrants or um, you know places they were based out of and all that fun stuff but overall I think it's a really good really cool looking fighter gonna make an awesome addition to your World War II worlds we just did a tutorial for the F6F uh, Hellcat so this is just a really good um, you know successor or a really good um, you know follow-up tutorial for that to combine the two um, basically into uh, battle scenes or whatever you want to do with them Anyway, so that's going to kind of do it for this overview. Let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alrighty, guys, so going ahead and moving into our first layers here, we will be going ahead and start with layers one and two. Now, before we go ahead and jump into this build, I do want to go ahead and mention a few quick things. If you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, this uh, tutorial will be structured in a layer by layer format, and each layer we will be building the center line of the aircraft in the right side. You'll then take what we do on the right side and flip it over to the left side. It's pretty straightforward. This aircraft is symmetrical, so whatever we do on one side will be done on the other side, besides a few minor details, which we'll talk about when we get to those points. Um, however, anything that we do on the right side will be transferred over to the left side. It just helps kind of speed up the tutorial, and I'm not doing the same thing, um, you know, repeating it on both sides, so it just makes it a little bit easier. Um, but with that out of the way, one thing also is that this is going to be for the in-flight version only. The lander version would sit in an, in, at an angle, so we would have to design a completely different design. So again, we'll be going ahead and doing this 
just at a normal kind of flying um, look. Uh, with that though, let's go ahead and dive into this. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to place down an iron bar. Behind that iron bar, we're going to place down a black concrete block. And then we're going to place down a row of smooth quartz. This is going to be a total of seven blocks back. We're going to go ahead and then place down a total of three pistons upside down. Now this is going to be a Java feature. If you're not on Java, instead of the three pistons, I'd recommend going ahead and using a smooth quartz full block and then two smooth quartz top slabs. Um, because we will be going ahead and modifying the pistons here with a tool that's only for Java players. So again, keep that in mind. So again, you, you either have the three pistons or you have the, court, the quartz full block and two quartz top steps. So go ahead and use whatever one there depending on your game version. And do make sure that if you are using the pistons and you're on Java that you do have access to um, commands. After this, we're going to go and then place down a red nether brick top slab, then two quartz top slabs and two iron trap doors. And that right there is going to form your center line. On the very uh, bottom here, we're going to go ahead and go to the bottom of the iron bar and the black concrete. We're going to place down two dark oak with trap doors underneath those blocks, a smooth quartz top slab back behind that, and then we're going to place down a row of four of iron trap doors going back from that. Off these uh, four iron trap doors, we're going to place down one, two, three iron trap doors, come off the first three, and then one, two, come off the first two there of that second row. So after those iron trap doors are placed, we're going to go ahead and then go back up to the front here. We're going to place down polished black stone upside Steer come off this iron bar, same come off this black concrete block. We're going to go ahead and take our smooth quartz. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five uh, blocks back. So a total of five. Then we're going to go ahead and take our quartz stairs. And we're going to place down two quartz up down stairs, a quartz top slab. And then we're going to place down two skeleton skulls come off these two blocks here. After that, we're going to go ahead and then go to the side here with another quartz full block. This is going to be followed by a second one back and then a third one and then two quartz slabs we're going to do the same thing again one two and three quartz full blocks then two slabs back then another quartz full block one two three this time and then one quartz slab there on the end so you have a total of three after that we're going to take our quartz top slabs we're going to go one two three four top slabs along the side here then the second row of four we're going to then go to the middle two slabs place down two more come off the center there iron trap door on the trailing edge there then two iron trap doors like this across for a total of three. Then one, two here again. And then a acacia wood trap door here on the front. So it's going to look like that there um, for your wings. And the last thing we need to do here is to go ahead and grab ourselves some item frames. And some yellow beds. And if you're on Java, some birchwood signs. We're going to place down one, two, three signs or item frames across those uh uh, three full blocks there. We're going to go and then place down yellow beds in the iron frames and rotate them sideways. Well, they're going to go and then place down birchwood signs across the side of those blocks. Again, if you're on Java, so it looks like that there on both sides um, to kind of form this like yellow line that's on the leading edge of a lot of the zeros. Um, but that right there is going to complete what we have there for um, this part of the uh, aircraft, layers one and two. And with that, let's go ahead and move on up to layer number three. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer three. For layer three, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and place down a polished black stone brick wall on top of this iron bar here. And then we're going to place down a stone block forward from it and a skeleton skull. After that, we're going to go ahead and go behind this wall with a black concrete block. And we're going to go ahead and place down a row of smooth quartz all the way down the center here of the build for a total of 10 blocks. We're going to go ahead and place down a red concrete block on top of that inner brick top slab. And then we're going to go ahead and place down four more smooth um, quartz blocks back in a skeleton skull on the very back, like so. After that's done, going back up to the front, we're going to go ahead and place down an iron bar that's going to come off this wall. And then a black concrete block right behind that. We'll also take our dark oak trap doors. We're going to place down two trap doors here on the sides to go ahead and create our uh, cowling around our nose. We're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, three, four, five, six smooth quartz blocks two red concrete, two diorite walls, two red or one red stained glass pane, and one white stained glass pane. We're going to go ahead and place down two iron trap doors like this. And if you're on Java, we're going to go ahead and type in the command slash give space at p space minecraft colon debug underscore stick. So this command right here, you'll press enter and you'll get this glowing stick. What we're going to do here is we're going to left click the iron trap doors till we get selected uh, open false. We're going to go and right click these and set these to true and they'll sit flat across the side of those blocks. Now if you do not have access to the debug stick you can very simply use birchwood trapdoors or just forgo using trapdoors there. But this is basically there for shaping. Over here on the front we're going to do the same thing here on the side of this block with iron trapdoors. Again birchwood trapdoors are a suitable alternative. Now with that done we want to go ahead and then take our 
uh, white carpet, and we're going to place down two white carpets here after that iron trap door. We're going to then place down three iron trap doors after that, and then we're going to place down three daylight detectors, and then two red nether brick slabs. After that, we're going to go ahead and then place down two white carpet. They're going to come off these first two iron trap doors, so one, two, and then we're going to place down two more iron trap doors, and then two more daylight detectors, and then two red nether brick slabs here to the very side, or to the very tip here. Um, after that, we're going to go ahead and then place down a white carpet here and two iron trap doors on top of those two there. Now, as you can see with our daylight detectors and our iron trap doors, we do have the problem with these daylight detector or these iron trap doors opening due to our daylight detectors. We can use our debug stick here to close these, or you can also use virtual trap doors and manually close them also as an alternative to that. Um, but that right there is pretty much it for that. And the last thing we have to do here is we have to go to the outside. We're going to go ahead and build some blocks underneath these slabs like so. And we're going to place down skeleton skulls here at about a 45 degree angle on both sides to kind of form your wing tip. So it kind of helps curve that out like so. And that will be done to both sides. And I'll go ahead and give you guys a second here to copy the right side over to the left side if you need to go ahead and pause the video. But um, yeah, go ahead and copy both sides over. And once you have both sides copied over, we have one thing on the left side and the left side only then we're going to add to the wing. We're going to go, and go to this first red nether brick slab. We're going to add an end rod and a chain coming off it going forward. That's it. Um, so that's the one thing on the left side. And the right side will just be as we had it. And this is what it'll look like from the top down view. Anyways, with that all complete there, that's going to wrap up everything we have there for layer three. And with that, let's move on to layer number four. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down an iron trap door on top of this wall followed by a black concrete block behind it. After that, we're gonna go ahead and place down a row of smooth quartz down the center here. This is gonna be a total of 10 blocks. We then wanna go ahead and place down two um, pistons. They're gonna sit like this. And we then wanna go ahead and place down one and two yellow concrete and then a sandstone wall. Now, after we have that done, we're gonna go ahead and go off this first piston, or sorry, the second piston here with two daylight detectors like this. And then we're gonna place down there two right behind them. Now you might run into the problem here where this piston is going to elevate. Now again, I want to go ahead and mention the real quick alternatives here. Um, the alternatives to this is to go ahead and place down two quartz slabs. So again, if you don't have access to a debug stick and pistons, um, we're going to be going ahead and using two quartz slabs here as an alternative. Now you might run into this problem here where this uh, piston is sticking up. What we're going to go ahead and do here is change these daylight detectors to night on both sides. We'll then take our debug stick here, right click them like so, and then we can go ahead and then uh, switch our um, daylight detectors back. Now to, to change the pistons, we went ahead and left click it till we get selected extended true. And by right clicking that, we can actually get rid of that wood portion or add to it. Um, so it's kind of cool um, to use. Um, really nice technique there for it. Um, do make sure though, but for this one right here, we're gonna go ahead and place down a wither skeleton skull on the side of that, just because if you do put a block next to this piston, it will update the block space. So I'd recommend going ahead and make sure you go ahead and do both sides of your vert or your horizontal stabilizers by these pistons, so you can go ahead and right click them and get rid of that wood portion. Um, but that right there is what you want right there on the back. We're gonna go ahead and then place down two iron trap doors here, and then we want to go ahead and then place down uh, one, two, come out this iron trap door, and then two, come off here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and again use our debug stick here to go ahead and get rid of the, or to go ahead and lay those iron trap doors flat. And again, you can go ahead and use birchwood trap doors as an alternative. Going forward, we're going to go ahead and place down one and two skeleton skulls, two red nether brick stairs, and then one, two, three, four, five, six smooth cord stairs, and then two polished blackstone stairs going forward, just like that. And after you have that all done right there, that is going to wrap up everything we have for layer number uh, four for the build. Pretty simple stuff. Take a look at it from up above. This is what it should look like for the top down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, layer number five. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer five. For layer five, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to start off by placing down two dark oak trap doors, one on top of the iron bar there, and one on top of this black concrete block. We're going to go ahead and place down a daylight detector. Make sure your trap doors do stay closed if it does open for the daylight detector. We're going to go ahead and place down an air brick stair, two black stained glass um, full blocks. Right here, we're going to place down a um, uh, piston, again, for my Java players. Again, if you're not on um, Java, I'd recommend going ahead and placing down a uh, red another brick stair. That would be like this instead, but for us, we're going to go ahead and place down a piston for Java. Then another brick slab, and then two iron trap doors. 
After that, we're going to go ahead and then place down a Wither Skeleton Skull come off the side of this Nerbrick Stair here, and then this Piston right here, or this block, and then one, two Black Stingless Panes along the side there of those blocks. On top of this piston, just so we can get this out of the way, or on top of the stair, we're going to place down an end rod, and then we can use our debug stick to right-click that piston to go ahead and get rid of that wood portion as well. And also for my Java players, on the bottom here also, we have these two, these three pistons. We can go ahead and use our debug stick on the bottom there for the shaping. On the uh, vertical stabilizer, we're going to go ahead and then place down a diorite slat, or diorite wall on top of this yellow concrete block, a smooth quartz block, and then a white stingless pane, followed by an acacia button on both sides of that block. And after we have that all done right there, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for layer five. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and transition over into doing our propeller here for the aircraft, since we're pretty much at a good spot to go ahead and do it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go off this uh, stone block, one, two, three, four blocks to the side. We're gonna go ahead and delete the first three blocks, and then we're gonna place down three wither skeleton skulls, like so. We're gonna go ahead and place down a polished black stone wall like this, and then going up at an angle one more, and then a wither skeleton skull going up from that and then going down here we're going to go ahead and place down a um was going to start off with a uh wither skeleton skull here so it's going to come off a block like that then a wall down and then we're going to place down a block here and a wall or and then a wither skeleton skull like that so you have your props here for the aircraft that look like that and after those props are out of the way, and everything is done there for layer 5 and transferred over to both sides, we'll be going ahead and moving into our last final layers of the build. Alright guys, moving into our last final layers, we have layers 6 through 7. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and start by going ahead and going to our end rod. Now for our end rod here, you can either place down a flower pot on top of it, or if you are on Java, we're going to go ahead and place down a block here, a lever, and then we'll go ahead and grab a debug stick, using our command from earlier. We're going to left click the lever till we get selected face wall. We're going to go ahead and right click this, set this to floor, and then we're going to left click this again till we get selected facing, and we're going to go ahead and rotate this around until it points toward the rear of the aircraft. Um, so again, you can have the flower pot or the lever technique here. We're also going to place down a dark oak uh, trap door on top of this first black um, stained glass block, just like that for the front there to finish the cockpit. We're going to go ahead and then take our barrier blocks. We're going to go ahead and go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight barrier blocks back like that and these barrier blocks can be also replaced with like structure or void blocks basically you want some invisible blocks that you can place down um, buttons on um, on the left side here and the left side only we're going to place down a row of buttons along those barrier blocks it's going to go all the way back here like that then we want to place down a yellow stained glass paint on top of this block here a yellow concrete block here and then a birchwood trap door on the back like so and then on top here, we're going to place down a daylight detector, just like that, to go ahead and finish off what we have there for um, the tail. And once you have that all done right there, that's going to wrap up everything we have for the A6M0, layers 6 and 7 complete, and the whole build uh, finished off. Anyways, guys, if you guys do enjoy this design and are able to put it to good use, if you do end up using this build, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This has been thing from the side of the build, tweak to my channel, or this video, if this does pretty social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for the build, you're free for a project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun, and all that fun stuff. Anyways, guys, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is Mirror204, and I'll see you guys next time.